so basically kidney cancer is generally sporadic there are a few um, uh, genetic abnormalities that can predispose someone to getting kidney cancer but generally it's a sporadic cancer most kidney tumors now a lot of them are instantly identified someone will come in with a kidney stone or with abdominal pain or with a pancreatic issue or some other issue that, that leads to them getting some abdominal imaging such as a ct scan and these are instantly identified for the past 10 or 15 years we have approached the kidney robotically from an anterior be from the front from the abdominal side and we basically with that surgery we have to go through the abdominal wall then we have to mobilize the kidney and sometimes the spleen and some of the surrounding organs the liver etc to be able to access the underlying kidney because the kidney actually lives behind the lining of your abdomen called the peritoneum that surgery is fine and it's been a great traditional approach it's an approach that i was trained on initially there are some tumors particularly posterior and superior and very inferior tumors that lend themselves to a retroperitoneal approach, which is an approach that is more through the side and the back. With that approach, we do not have to mobilize the bowel, which saves us from some potential complications. It also provides us very rapid access to the arteries and the uh, vasculature of the kidney. I would say just looking at, this, at the cases that I've done, if I were to do a tr the traditional transperitoneal approach on a three centimeter posterior tumor, I would be looking at somewhere around a 30 to 45 minute longer surgical time on doing the transperitoneal approach just to, due to the level of mobilization that is required to flip the kidney over to access that tumor on the backside. And even with that, um, it's not the best the not the best view um, when you come in on this retroperitoneal uh, approach that I'm kind of talking about. You're basically right on top of the tumors if they're posterior tumors, and it's a very, very nice. You're, you can access and be on top of the kidney tumor within 20 minutes of access of the patient's intra-abdominal cavity. For the patient, I would say shorter operative time, generally less blood loss. You have um, you have good uh, tamponade because it's in the retroperitoneal space. If there is any bleeding, you have some um, kind of natural organ structures and body structures that will provide pressure against to, to stop any low-level bleeding. Recovery and discharge from the hospital time. Most people that have a transperitoneal mean across the abdomen surgery, there's a little more tender with that because there are the abdomen, ab abdominal muscles you're using to breathe and move. This retroperitoneal approach, we come in more from the side, um, and with that, we don't have we don't really have the effect on the abdominal muscles such as the transperitoneal approach would have. There's a risk when you go transperitoneal across the abdomen, which is the traditional approach of, of hernia formation. That risk is much lower in the retroperitoneal um, because basically you had the bowel has no access to that area because of the lining. As long as you don't violate that lining, the peritoneum, the peritoneum of the abdomen, as long as you don't violate that lining, there's nothing to punch out. Most of my patients are discharged the next day. So basically would do the surgery. Um, they're maintained in the hospital for one night. We have them uh, basically get up and walk around, make sure they're feeling okay, that they can eat, um, and, and that their blood level is, is basically stable the following day. Once they've met some of those milestones, their pain's controlled reasonably well, which almost all of them are uh, controlled very well and require very minimal pain medication upon discharge. Um, then basically they get to be discharged then the following day. So most hospital stays are 24 hours or less.